Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Inevitable Excess with me, Bring It Down. Let's speak to Hylor. Venture Captain Hylor salutes you warily. He looks haggard and lost. Commander, I'm glad to see you alive. You don't look so well. My journey was rough. All of my comrades fell in battle. I spent four sleepless days and nights running from demons who wanted to skin me alive. By some miracle, I crossed paths with one of your patrols, and that's what saved me. What are you doing here? I ended up here by accident. I spent a great deal of time tracking down the Spinner of Nightmares, and I finally discovered her lair. I recruited a daring team, and I went up to put a stop to her misdeeds. That's where our luck ran out. The demons roaming the area slaughtered every one of my fellows, while I myself was rescued by Crusader scouts. And here I am. I can't continue chasing this Spinner on my own, but I can't be of use to you and your troops. The Pathfinder Society has long suggested that I oversee the selling of loot from their expeditions. After seeing our position at the front with my own eyes, I finally agree. If I ever need your services, I'll come find you. I'll help where I can, my supplies at your disposal. But I hope I can expect some help in return. I have a crusade of my own to wage, after all. Hey, show me your supplies. Alright, generic plus five gear. And some unique stuff, some of which... Is from the base game. And the rest I don't recognize. So let's go ahead and go through this. Starting with Panther's Grace. This plus 5 studded armor grants its wearer a plus 15 competence bonus on stealth skill checks, as well as a plus 4 competence bonus on reflex saving throws. It's pretty good. Purging Chains. This plus 5 adamantine chain shirt makes its wear immune to ability score damage. And that's really good. Hold on to that for right now. A Solid Chains. This plus 4 chainmail barney grants its wear DR6 piercing. Blowing Half Plate. This plus 4 half plate grants its wear a plus 5 bonus on reflex saving throws. In addition, Whenever the wearer makes a successful reflex saving throw against an attack that normally deals half damage on a successful save, they instead take no damage, as if they had the evasion feat. I think this is from the base game. I don't remember it being heavy armor, I thought it was medium or light. But it makes sense to have it on heavy armor. I didn't realize this was only plus three. Might get that for her. We'll see. A tribal scout's hide. This plus five hide armor grants the wearer a plus ten competence bonus to stealth. While in stealth or invisible, all successful attacks deal additional six force damage. Trailblazer's armor. This plus four leather armor grants its wearer a plus ten competence bonus on perception checks and a plus three bonus to maximum dexterity. Chainmail of Spiteful Barbs. This plus 5 chainmail grants its wearer a plus 5 competence bonus on persuasion skill checks made to intimidate. Whenever the wearer suffers 10 or more HP damage from a single ranged attack, they gain a plus 1 morale bonus to armor class for one round, and their next melee attack deals additional 2d6 piercing damage on a successful hit. Not bad. A Dragonfall you buy from the Storyteller in Illusion Iroh. Uh, Realm Protector. This plus 4 full plate grants its wear additional stacking DR2 for each dead outsider in a 30 foot area. Uh, Frozen Scales, also from the base game. Uh, Mystic Grace. This plus 3 leather armor is made from very light and delicate leather, increasing max dexterity bonus by 1 and decreasing arcane spell failure chance by 10%. It also grants the wearer a plus 2 bonus in caster level checks made to overcome spell resistance. A Beacon of Carnage. This plus 4 breastplate grants its wearer DR2 and increases by 1 for each enemy in melee range of the wearer, but no higher than 5. Perfect Storm. 
While the wearer of this plus four full plate armor is wielding weapons in two hands or is wielding a two handed weapon, the weapon's largest enhancement bonus is added to AC with shield descriptor. That's a really cool effect. I really like that. I mean, it's not the best effect, but that's right up my alley. A Royal Messenger's Chain Shirt. This plus four mithril chain shirt grants its wearer a plus four bonus on reflex saving throws and a plus ten competence bonus on mobility checks. Desert Mirage. This plus five leather armor grants its wearer a plus fifteen competence bonus on trickery skill checks. In addition, Whenever the wearer successfully pa uh, passes a saving throw, they gain the displacement spell effect for one round. Also pretty good. Breastplate of the Tireless Warrior. This plus five adamantine breastplate grants its wearer immunity to fatigue and exhaustion effects. It's almost really good for my main character. If there's a way to make Bucephalus immune to fatigue and exhaustion as well, that way I can ensure that I can constantly charge. My Ultimate Predator and Rabbit Rippers are both from the base game. I welcome more uh, respite. Uh, whenever the wearer of this plus five banded armor is attacked in melee while being prone, stunned or staggered, the attacker must pass a reflex saving throw, suffer from the same condition for two rounds. In addition, Summer grants its wear immunity to fire and acid. The first effect is a little niche, but the second effect, I mean any sort of immunity is just fantastic. Can't go wrong with being immune to something. Alright, Armor Vigilant Sprouts. I think this is from the base game, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to read it. Uh, whenever the wearer of this plus four padded armor is hit by a sneak attack or an attack of opportunity, the attacker must pass a reflex saving through and become entangled for three rounds. And it's probably safe to assume that any of the plus four equipment is from the base game anyway. It's most likely just something I don't remember. Undying Devotion. This plus five full plate armor grants its wear immunity to paralyzed condition. It also adds plus one to the DC for all saving throws against spells from the necromancy school and the other wheel, uh, wielder casts. That is really good for a future build I have planned. Promise of greatness. This plus four breastplate makes the wearer's first spell cast in any combat bolstered, as they're using the bolster spell feat. Eternal ballad. This plus four mithril chain shirt prevents Bard's bardic performance or Scald's raging song class abilities from being interrupted when the wearer is stunned or knocked prone. In addition, allies revived by the Scald's Song of the Fallen gain a plus two morale bonus to attack and damage until the end of combat. Seems pretty handy. A Throne Keeper. This plus five adamantine full plate mail grants its wearer DR10 immunity to cold and fire as well as all combat maneuvers. Alright, Silver Mist. This plus five mithril breastplate grants its wear immunity to precision damage. That might be worthwhile too. The first fight in this DLC, archers messed us up. So his armor is really good. I'm not going to replace that. For Rushla, I have to decide between immunity to precision damage or ability to score damage. We're going to see precision damage more than we see ability to score damage. But ability to score damage is much worse than this. Though precision damage will kill you. 
we don't usually die to ability score damage, you can. So I actually think this is better. And for Sela, 10 DR and immunity to cold and fire and combat maneuvers. Or get that niche effect, so while being prone, stunned, or staggered, the attacker must pass a reflex saving throw or suffer from the same condition for two rounds. And immunity to fire and acid. It's probably time I give my main character an upgrade. Let's do it this way. That is really cool looking armor. And it matches my cloak. All right, I think that works. I mean, I'm missing four extra damage, but do I really want to do that. I mean, it's hard to put this armor down. I mean, that just looks so cool. I still think this is better, though. I don't know. I'll decide later. For now, oh wait, we need to finish talking to Hadlor. Get a quest for us, I think. Uh, good to see you, Commander. My companions and I need good training. Hey, it doesn't cost any money. I'll get a great mentor from Absalom. You have to pay for his services. <laughs> Zero gold coins. <laughs> that amount is unacceptable. I'm sorry, but the society has established universal rates to avoid competition between pathfinders of different countries. I'm playing on a core. I shouldn't have the ability to respec anyway. I need brave and experienced fighters. You rely on my lads, but you have to pay them. 200,000 is their standard rate. That amount is unacceptable. Alright, same dialogue as before. Uh, what sort of help do you have in mind? Help me finish my hunt. Color shows you a map with a location marked on it. Here, in the very heart of the wound, lies the lair of the Spinner of Nightmares. I got close enough to see she has a horde of minions there, and their abyssal spawn prowling about the vicinity. As much as I hate to admit it, this is a fight I can't win, but you can. Do this for me. Kill the spinner of nightmares in her lair, and save my poor Lori. Now remind me, who is the spinner of nightmares again? A raving Baphomite lunatic, extremely vicious and dangerous, and a master of illusions. Many years ago, she kidnapped my daughter Lori, and I've been on her trail ever since. We've had many confrontations, but every time she's been able to escape. But today is different, after cornered in her own den, and one last strike will finally mark the end of this hunt. Don't you get the feeling that we've had this conversation before? I've already cleared out the Spinner of Nightmares lair. Albert gives you a look of confusion. Your words ring hollow. They keep saying that. I don't know whose lair you cleared out, or what name its owner called herself. But the Spinner of Nightmares is most definitely alive and well, and she's holding my daughter captive. I'll drop by the Spinner of Nightmares lair. Heller salutes you solemnly. Thank you. Hope you return victorious and bring my Lori back to me. But if, if something has happened to her, you know what must be done. Avenge her and do not hold back. I have to go. Let's find a spot to rest. I'm curious if there's going to be party banner in the DLC or not. Time's not waiting. Especially since a lot of the party banner in the base game is reactive to what's going on in the base game. I know the way.
Lord Wound yawns wide before the commander, as hostile as ever. The commander decides that he should... Go to the lair of the Spinner of Nightmares. No mistakes. Then I'm going to fully buff up here. I'm not going to risk pulling any punches because that this first couple of fights in this DLC <laughs> I'd be a little concerned. Well, granted, the fight with the storyteller wasn't too bad. So maybe that's the rule, and the first two fights were the exception. I'm not actually gonna fully buff up here. Oh, yes. What? Just gonna do the essentials. Always be ready for the worst. You are my favorite aid. I'm prepared. Alright, hopefully that's enough. And really I just cut out Stone Skin Communal and Are we ready to move out? Yeah, just Stone Skin a Stone Skin Communal. Something over there. Everlasting light. This plus five full plate male grants its wear immunity against fear and compulsion effects. Every time the wearer becomes a target of such effect. They grant all allies, including themselves, in a 30-foot area, a plus 4 morale bonus on attack and damage rolls, as well as all saving throws for 3 rounds. I mean, that's really good too. But it looks awesome. It does look awesome. Oh cool, it has a... Uh, the symbol of Amade on the front. Man, that's so cool. <laughs> all the armor in this game is just awesome. All right, uh, let's head up here and I guess speak to the Spinner of Nightmares. Y 
Gunk berries. These red berries look so appetizing that you do not doubt for a moment that they are incredibly poisonous. A launder adept? The figure closest to you turns around, stares at you, and barks. I will save you, young lady. The figure standing next to the first turns to you, giving you a stern look, then says with finality, Wicked mirages surround us. A lot of voices seem to have disturbed a third figure, which turns around and whispers, It's so easy to feel lonely in a crowd. Who are you? The second figure shrugs and says with a tinge of sadness, Wicked mirages surround us. The closest figure responds to the second angrily, clenching its fists. I will save you, young lady. Whoever whatever the figure closest to you is, it's clearly determined to save someone, which could only mean one thing. Whatever is going on here, someone is in danger. <laughs> A gold coin for every new word in your vocabulary. Deal? The second figure frowns and opens its mouth. After a brief silence, it makes a helpless gesture, apologetically saying, Wicked mirages surround us. Can all these figures be illusions? Hastily crafted copies expressed in the simple thought that preoccupied the creator when they were conjured. Examine the figures. The second figure, when warning about wicked mirages, scrutinizes you in turn. He whispers poignantly and somewhat sadly, Wicked mirages surround us. I'm looking for the spinner of nightmares. Words cause the third figure to goggle at you fearfully, bring a finger to its lips. It's so easy to feel lonely in a crowd. The insistence with which the third figure is urging you to avoid being noticed suddenly feels important. Is this place dangerous? The closest figure nods with utmost seriousness and enunciates. I will save you, young lady. I have a theory. The closest figure speaks up fervently, echoing your words. I will save you, young lady. All of you are nothing but illusions. Am I right? The second figure drones affirmatively. Wicked mirages surround us. I need more details to work with. It's so easy to feel lonely in a crowd. The figure's voice carries a hint of pity. I'll leave for now. Have a good one. They'll never see me coming. Meditate on your mistakes. Might make you feel better. I'm curious. Quiet steps. Weapons ready. I said I don't know if there's something else I'm supposed to do here or <laughs> Quiet steps. Weapons ready. A great dog portrait. Alright. Well let's see what we can do. So the closest figure speaks up fervently, echoing your words. I will save you, young lady. Someone needs saving. Your creator, perhaps. Is your creator, by any chance, a young lady? The closest figure looks at you proudly. I will save you, young lady. So where is your creator? Is she hiding behind the crowd of illusions she conjured? It's so easy to feel lonely in a crowd. The third figure nods, delighted. Alright, so where is she? All three figures, never the figure in the room, turn toward an empty corner and stare at it silently. Shellen, shield me from their sight. You hear a frightened sob coming from the empty corner. Show yourself. The illusion vanishes, and you see a young woman who is scared to death. Despite her fear, however, uh, she's clutching a small knife, and that knife is confidently pointing at your face. Don't hurt me. You recognize the Spinner of Nightmares. When last you met, she's wearing a cultist clothes and her face was stained with blood. Now she looks like a regular townswoman. Who are you? Why should I introduce myself to a stranger? The look of desperation in her eyes. She gets a better grip on the knife. Alright, fine. I'm Lori. And you are? Do you remember me? 
He looks at you with a doubtful expression, then shakes her head firmly. Stop messing with me. We've never met. I have a great memory for faces. I'm Don Quixote. She nods warily. Well, nice to meet you, Don Quixote, if that is your real name. What are you doing here? She's hesitant, clearly unsure whether or not she should be candid with you, then finally says, No idea. I just woke up all of a sudden, right here on the floor, not having the slightest idea where I am or how I got here. Then the illusions came. Those dummies who only know how to say one phrase. And I think I'm the one creating them. It's like thoughts and images jump out of, out of my head and take shape. But nothing like this has ever happened before. Am I a sorceress? I have a hypothesis that warrants an experiment. You, girl who looks like a famous cultist, try forgetting something important from your recent past. After a moment's pause, then you ask demandingly, Well, forgotten anything yet? I don't think so. Lori looks at Nenio quizzically. Hypothesis refuted. Pity. I surmise that you had purposely forgotten the circumstances of your relocation for the sake of some more relevant information, but instead it seems to be an ordinary case of scatterbrain. I suppose I should decide what to do with you. Bad chance. I'm not going to let anyone do anything with me. Despite her fear, she assumes a fighting stance. It seems that someone has taught her the basics of melee combat. We must help her. I'd rather trust a deceiver than spend the rest of my days wondering if I'd left an innocent woman in harm's way. I'll take you to your father, to Hylor. My father? Her expression turns doubtful, and the doubt is replaced by a look of understanding. Oh, I see. You're just another illusion. Get lost, Mirage. What makes you think I'm an illusion? It's too convenient to be true. I've already figured out that all the illusions are coming from inside my head. So here I am, thinking about how I want to go to my father, and then you appear and offer to take me there. Her body language makes it very clear that she will not be going anywhere with you. Trust me, I'm no illusion. Adventure Captain Hylor is my comrade in arms. Her suspicion slowly abates. This is probably a mistake, but I really want to believe you. Alright, I'll go with you. You sense that the ground beneath your feet is a little shakier than before. The colors around you seem to blur slightly, and the sounds you hear blend and mix together. Your actions have violated the order and stability of this place. I didn't even think about that happening. I guess because she's supposed to die? Even if I had thought about that, there's no way I could do that to Hylor again. That is, if he doesn't see her as a spinner of nightmares when we bring her, her to him and he attacks her. Now we are making a mystery of ourselves? That happens. I'm hoping we can intervene. Good to see you, Commander. I have news for you about the Spinner of Nightmares. You've dealt with the Spinner. Is my daughter safe? I call Lori over. Your daughter is already at the camp. Lori, come over here. Dad, it's you. Lori, you've never seen Hylor so shaken, so vulnerable. Commander, you saved her. After all these years of hunting, a little girl is with me again. I'm eternally indebted to you, and in Phrasma's court, I will testify to your heroism. Lori, who is standing nearby, gives you a grateful and somewhat sheepish, sm sheepish smile. Now, how are you holding up, Lori? I'm alright. When I made it to the camp, the first thing they did was uh, take me to a mage. He says my mind is clear, and there are no dark surprises lurking in there. My soul bears no mark of demon worship. With a surreptitious glance back at the momentarily distracted Hylor, Lori leans in closer to you and whispers, 
I have this weird, nagging feeling that I really was that spinner woman. That's where my illusion power came from. But I can't remember a single moment from that life. Maybe I was possessed. I don't know for sure, but please don't tell my father. He suffered enough as it is. Are you happy to be back with your father? Oh yes. I was so scared when I came to the, uh, came to in that strange place, I couldn't remember a thing. When the soldiers told me about the spinner of nightmares taking me away, my father chasing her for years and years, it was like uh, listening to a fairy tale, you know? Any plans for the future? I'm sure I can make myself useful here in your camp. I can help the wounded, sharpen weapons, make arrows. And after that, well before, I wanted to be a pathfinder. Now that I've seen the world wound up close, I know I'm definitely going to be one. Um, <laughs> out of the question. No pathfinders, no dangerous foes or adventures. No more. Elora's stern tone can't fool either you or Lori. His eyes twinkle with the father's unbridled joy. I'm glad you two have been reunited. I've dreamt of this moment for so many years. Thank you. With a sincere smile, Lori bows to you gratefully. I should probably go. Healers could use an extra pair of hands. I was never good at stealth, but I'll try. Yeah, I think even if we are tearing the fabric of reality apart by making that decision, it was the right decision to make. Alright, uh, good eyes. I will help where I can. My will is resolute. Let me help. No reason to pause. Together, we stand. You require my unbiased opinion? We'll keep that as is for now. I'm all ears. Put that a few more buffs since we're in a new area, and I assume a more dangerous area. Are we in trouble yet? That is not far. What are you doing in eyes? Warvok. My greetings, excess. Tall barbarian, your old acquaintance. Look, uh, looks at you with his brows furrowed. Didn't expect to see you here. What are you doing here in Eyes, when you're supposed to be in Threshold? I know this guy. He's the one our commander trounced in Winter Sun. Eyes is supposed to be dead. How did he manage to survive? Marvok, but you're dead. Marvok gives you a skeptical look. You're just as uncalled for. We fought, and he prevailed. Do you let me live? I've led the Winter Sun clan ever since, going by law and truth like a true chief. Did you just call me Excess? You must have misheard. I said, Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. Marvok seems to be speaking honestly. You catch a slight glint in his eye. What are you doing in eyes? My clan and I made haste to aid you. We wanted to repay you for all the good the Crusaders had done us and join you in the battle at Threshold. But the journey took us longer than expected, so I gave the order to head to eyes instead. We decided we would rebuild this place. Restore it to its former glory. We've already raised a dozen houses. A dozen will be ready by the end of the week. The work continues throughout eyes as we speak. Now I see that the Battle of Threshold is yet to take place. It will come to your aid when the fighting begins. I came here to destroy the anomalies. What can you tell me about them? I know what you speak of. Uh, there's nothing special about these anomalies, though. It's similar to a disease that drives force beasts mad. Rabid creatures are not an uncommon sight in the world wound. They die like any other beasts, but they give us no trouble. To tell the truth, we've been handling these anomalies on our own well enough. Since you're here, go ahead and help. 
I have many questions for you. Now I answer them, but not here. The rules of hospita hospitality demand that I speak to you in the Great Hall, after you've rested. I don't believe you. That is your problem, not mine. Arbok chuckles. I'll speak with you later. Of course. I'll be waiting for you in the Great Hall. We've erected a number of structures and eyes. You'll find it easily. They'll never see me coming. Well, that is a little odd. I'll go ahead. What's over there? I know the way. Always be ready for the worst. Reality shudders as if it has been caught doing something shameful, or quickly returning to normal. You've crossed the wrong Yet another road. obstacle. <laughs> Did you see that? No. Another one of these guys. Alright. I'm going to call the episode here. And the next one will continue through eyes. I guess deal with this guy first. They already start off non-hostile until we get close enough and they attack us. So, I'll be ready for that. Then we'll go speak to Marvok and see what's going on here. And I guess make another decision that's either going to break or fix reality. <laughs> we'll see. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.